Hey, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're gonna look at the singleton pattern and how it works in Ruby. My name is Caesar, and I've been using Ruby since 2008 to build all sorts of web applications, from simple MVP apps to full-blown multi-million dollar ones. In the beginning, I used to hate it because every time I would change something, I would break some other parts of the app. And every time I needed to add a new feature, guess what, I would need to change a lot of code and eventually break something. So I got really frustrated about it and started to look into how to solve both of these problems. And I eventually discovered that the solution to problem number one, i.e. not breaking stuff when you change code, is to test it really well using strong automated testing principles. But that's not as easy as it may sound, it took me years to fully master this process. By the way, if you're interested in how to do that and not spend years discovering it by yourself through trial and error, you can check out my book Bulletproof Ruby on Rails Applications, which I've linked in the description below. Now, going back to problem number two, i.e. extending your app without changing too much code, is to design it really well. And that's where today's pattern comes in. The singleton pattern helps with restricting the number of instances a class can create to just one, and giving you a global way to access that instance. This can be helpful when you need to manage access to some resource like a configuration object or a logger. But how does it work? Well, step one is to make the default constructor private so that other developers cannot use the new method. And step two is to create a public class method that builds a new instance if one doesn't exist or returns a cached one if it was already created. Now let's look at some code. This class has nothing to do with the singleton pattern, but I just wanted to show you how the singleton pattern changes a regular object. As you can see in the example, on line 9 we initialize an object with the name John and we print a name. Then on the next line we do the same thing, but this time the name is Mary. In other words, every time you initialize an object you get a different instance with its own state. So here's how the singleton pattern changes things. As mentioned earlier, the singleton pattern requires you to hide the new method and cache the instance. Then whenever a custom class method is called, you return the cached instance. So in this custom singleton class, we're making the new method private and we're defining a class method called instance, which returns a cached instance if one is found in the class instance variable, or it calls the private new method and assigns the new instance to the class instance variable. Now to use it, we call the instance method and we get back an instance with the name set to John. But the second time we call the instance method, we get back the same object. Even if we pass it a new name, we still get back the old one because the initializer isn't called as long as the cached instance exists. That is basically what the singleton pattern is all about. But I want to mention a few more things that are specific to Ruby. The first one being the singleton module. Ruby provides a module called singleton which can include in any class to make it behave like a singleton. So in this example, we require the singleton module and we include it in our class which has the name accessor. So to test its behavior, we can call the instance method on the singleton module class to get back an instance. Then we can change the instance's state by using name equals with a string. And to see the change, we can also print a name to the console. Now if we try to get a new instance using the instance method, we can see that we get back the same instance. Also, just to prove that we don't have a way to call the new method, you'll see that if we do so, we get an exception because including the singleton module makes the new method private. Okay, so let's continue. As you probably know, in Ruby you can open up a class and add methods to its singleton class, which has similar behavior to using the singleton pattern, meaning you can access its state just like you would access a global variable or a singleton instance. That is because it is a singleton instance. And because modules are no different, we can get the same behavior by using modules as well. But modules are even closer to the singleton pattern because we don't have a new method. And one last thing I want to mention is that you can use constants as well to achieve a similar goal. By assigning an instance to a constant, you get access to it globally. So that's what the singleton pattern looks like in Ruby, and while they do have their use cases, I'd think twice before using any kind of global variables. You could get into trouble if you mutate global state, especially when writing multi-threaded code. So there you have it, that is the singleton pattern in Ruby. I hope that helped, and if you're interested in learning more about Ruby, 
don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I'll be posting a lot more videos just like this one. Bye!